Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, part six in topic three of our database class, I'm going to discuss how we can add data to tables by using the SQL insert into statement. And I'll also do a live demonstration in SQL Server Management Studio. So we'll begin with insert into. And again, it's as is always the case, it's just about learning the pattern. Once you learn it once, you can apply it over and over and over again to different databases, different scenarios, and so on. So the way that this works is we start with the SQL keywords insert into, and then we specify the destination where we want these new data to go. In this case, I'm putting data into my employee table. And then what we have here inside parentheses is a comma separated list of column names. So what I'm doing is I'm telling the database like, okay, database, I'm going to insert some new data into the employee table. And what I'm going to be doing is providing you with the new values that I want you to, those values will be for the employee ID, employee name, and higher date columns in that order. So we're specifying this comma separated list. The first item in the list is employee ID. The second item in the list is employee name. And the third item in the list is higher date. So we're telling the database, I'm going to give you three values to use as a new row in the employee table. And they will be in that order, employee ID followed by employee name, followed by higher date. So we then use the SQL keyword values after which we have another comma separated list of things contained inside parentheses. It's just that here we're actually providing the data that we want to insert. So this first value corresponds to the first column name that we provided here. This will be our employee ID for the new row. The second data value, Katniss Everdeen, will be the value for the employee name column. Right, this is the second item in our list of column names. And our third value will be this date value, the 22nd of February, 2021. We're going to say that is the higher date. So remember, these correspond. Right. If I list the items here as employee ID and then employee name and then hire date, the data that I provide as my new data here must be in the same order. This will be the employee ID, this will be the employee name, and this will be the hire date. Note that when we are working in SQL with any non-numeric data that is anything that's not a number, any data value that's not a number, we need to enclose that data value with single quotes. Okay. This is used to tell the database where the data value starts and where it ends. So we're telling it, I want you to insert this data value, Katniss Everdeen, as the employee name. And we use these single quote characters to mark the start and end of that value. We see the same thing here with this date. Right? So we mark the start of the date with a single quote character there. And we mark the end of it with a single quote character here. Because this is not numeric data. right? This is not a number. It's a date. This is not a number. It's some sort of character data. This, however, is a number. It's probably an integer, our employee ID. So you'll note that there are no single quotes here. Right? For numbers, we do not need to provide them. It's only for non-numeric data where we need to enclose the value inside single quotes. So again, the order of the columns matters. Whatever order you specify here, must match what you specify here. And you, as the person writing the statement, have complete control over this. For example, 
you could do something, I don't know, like this as an equivalent statement. Say you did insert into employee, open paren, and let's say we mix this up a little bit. So do a higher date and then employee ID and then employee name. Goes paren. Okay. Keyword values. And then my values. And in this case, my hire date is the 22nd of February, 2021. My employee ID is 62. And the employee's name is Katniss. Close parenthesis, semicolon. That was a lot of typing. I apologize. But let's uh, spread this out and look at the whole thing. To the extent that we can anyway. <laughs> I don't know if I can get this all in one line or not. Yeah, well, it's fine. We'll just let it spill over. So what we've done here is we've manipulated the order of the columns, right? To whereas previously I was using employee ID and then employee name and then hire date in that order. Down here, I've specified hire date and then employee ID and then employee name. And that's perfectly fine. As long as the values that I include after this value statement are in the same order, right? So in this case. Hire date, then employee ID, then employee name. So the values that I provide are the hire date, and then the employee ID, and then the employee name. Okay. So whatever order you specify here is the order in which you provide the data. And you can put them in whatever order you prefer. All right. Another nice trick that I'll show you here in a moment is that so we can insert multiple rows with a single insert into statement. So we don't have to type out insert into employee, all these column names and all this junk values every single time that we want to insert a single row. We can do multiple rows with one insert into statement. And let me show you how that works. Now let's do a little live demonstration here. We'll switch back over to our SQL Server Management Studio. Now, remember our uh, database structure currently looks like this. If we take a look at our project table, you'll see that we currently have one project out there from our adventures earlier. Right? So we have one project out there, project ID 1002, project name is project two. So now let's write a little SQL statement that will insert some data. Again, I check, I ensure that my SQL statement is going to the employees database. And uh, we're going to do an insert here. So insert into name of the table is project. I'm going to specify values for the project ID and the project name in that order. And uh, then I'll use the continue this on another line so that we don't spill over there. And I provide the values. So I'm going to create project number one. And I'll call this, I don't know, my project. Right. And if we were to run this, right, one row affected. And if we then take a look at the data in the project table, you'll see that we now have our new row inserted there. Project number one, my project. So now let's see how we can change things around a bit. So maybe I want to do project name and then project ID. That's fine. As long as I match the order of the values here. So we have my other project. And then I'll put in, I don't know, number two. So as long as the order corresponds, you'll be just fine. And if once again, we take a look at the data out there in our project table, we'll see that we have a new row added, project number two, my other project. Okay, so let's uh, put this back the way it was just for the sake of having some variety in our demonstrations here. Now let me show you how we can do multiple rows all at once. So let's say that I want to insert three new projects and I don't want to type out something like this over and over and over again. Now let me do it first by all this, I don't know, project three. Now, one way we could do this would be to do something like this, where we would say project number four, 
This will be project four is its description. This one will be five and the five. So this would work, but it's a lot of extra typing, right? Now, if we wanted to accomplish the same thing with just one insert into statement, we could do that. And the way that we would do that is by just putting a comma after this first set of values that we want to insert. And then we provide the next set of values that we'd like to insert inside their own set of parentheses. And then we could do the third one if we wanted to. So like this, what you see here, would automatically insert three rows. But for the sake of maybe making this a little easier to see as a human, I'll just spread it along some separate lines. So with one insert into statements, we're going to be inserting a row that has a project ID of three and a description of project three, a second row that has project ID four for project four and project ID five for project five. So this is technically one SQL statement, but it will insert three rows of data with just one line, All right? So if I were to run this, see, we get three rows affected this time. And if we take a look at our project table, you'll see that uh, we've got our new projects out there. So here's project three, project four, project five, which we added with that one SQL statement here. Cool. So lots of projects in there. That's good stuff.